going to drink my coffee like a Chinese emperor today. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Woo! I feel much better than I did yesterday. I think that's the big reason for trying to stay healthy is that I just feel less anxious. All of the same work that needs to be done and all the same problems I had yesterday, they're still there, but I feel better about it. So I can waste time and do nothing with the best of them, but there's one thing that I cannot do, which is I cannot leave work unfinished. I'm getting caught up on some videos that I needed to edit, and I just realized how much better I feel now that they're getting done. It's not even like they were big, important videos, they were just little ones, but I can't enjoy like my free time and fun stuff until that stuff gets done. From like, when we were editing Yellowstone, just the thought of doing anything, but getting that video done was repulsive to me. business. <laughs> Are they still behind me? I can't see. <laughs> Shoutouts to Raven Rook. Happy birthday today, brother. I believe he's turning 39? I was about to say 79, but he's definitely not turning 79, it's 39. I was telling him, sounds like a good age. And he was like, he thinks that 70 is the new 50? I will agree with that, because I'm pretty sure that my mom had me when she was like 26. I'm 31. No kids or prospects of kids in sight. <laughs> Okay, quick unboxing here. Michael borrowed my camera while he was in Pennsylvania. Camera, batteries, okay, good to go. The reason I'm unboxing this right now is because I just had a question on Adventure Archives about the Steadicam. I thought I would take this opportunity to go out real quick and show you what the Steadicam does. So this is the camera, obviously. This is the Steadicam. There's a quick release plate on the bottom of the camera and a quick release base station on the top of the Steadicam right here. So the first thing you do is you slide the camera into the base plate. This handle right here is very smooth moving. The bottom here will counteract the weight of the camera. So you balance it so that when you drop it, it falls really slowly. Even a little bit slower than that. In fact, even slower than that. And this took like the entire time we've been making Adventure Archives to finally perfect it. And I say perfect it, but just made it much better like four or five months ago. Okay, but anyways, let's say that's good enough. Is it good enough? Yeah, it's good enough. Okay, next thing you do is you have to hold it like this. See how it falls forward? You have to pull the plate backwards. Okay, that's close enough because I just want to show you guys. Okay, so then when you walk around, the camera kind of floats in space like this, right? You just make minor adjustments near the axis. Then you just walk like this and it kind of takes out all of the heavy steps of your movement so you can get really smooth shots like this. And then if you move it left to right, you can see how it kind of keeps its balance. Like I don't have that balance very well right now. I think typically when you hear Steadicam, like in Hollywood and stuff like that, it's a big body mounted rig and it's got electronics and gyroscopes and calibration and all this stuff. This thing, while it's not as smooth as all that, it's really good because it doesn't have a battery and we can take it out into the wild really easily and it doesn't weigh that much. And you can even run too. So I could run off to the side, get a fairly smooth shot, and then I could run back. And that's overexposed, but whatever. You get smooth shots around the tree. You make little sound effects like I do. Oh, what's this? It's like, is this birch bark? If I 
have learned anything from Adventure Archives is that this is probably birch bark. <laughs> I'm so confident. So there are a couple of tricks that I've learned over the years to make your Steadicam footage better. The first thing to do is have a really wide lens. So this is a 16 millimeter lens on a full frame sensor, which is pretty much as wide as you can get before you start to get fish eyed. Like the more you can see, the less minute movements matter, right? And the other thing is slow motion. When you do things in slow motion, it makes things look really smooth. But other than that, I think it's really just practice. You need muscle memory. But actually the most important thing is that you balance it well. Balancing it comes before anything else. If somebody who doesn't know how to use it uses a well-balanced Steadicam, it'll still look pretty good. But if somebody who's good at it or has had lots of practice uses one that's not balanced, it's still gonna look kind of bad. They actually make very small motorized versions of what I'm using right now. I haven't really investigated those because they're pretty expensive. There's like $500. They produce amazing results, even better than this one. There's no exit there. I'd like to be able to vlog with this thing, but it's way too cumbersome. Wow, that sky looks beautiful. The other great thing about a Steadicam is that you can run with it and the footage is actually usable. And not only usable, but actually looks pretty good. <sighs> Can anybody tell me, like, aren't they called retention ponds? What are they for? Is it for like when it floods or something? Never quite understood why they made those nasty little ponds in neighborhoods. Or is it just for looks? So there's two things that I'm reminded of. The first one is Back to the Future when they had those new housing developments. And the second one is that my nephew really loves construction equipment. And that's not uncommon among kids. And there are YouTube channels that have nothing but construction equipment. And they have millions of views and subscribers. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Being successful on YouTube does not always mean putting in a lot of hard work. It means having a really unique concept. Like that hydraulic press guy. I'm sure that press costs like $200,000. So, I mean, there is a significant investment involved, but after that, it's just crushing things, which is cool. And don't get me wrong. Also, new housing developments always remind me of the Truman Show. I don't know, it's so homogenized. So there's some big construction equipment for you, Everett. I guess I can kind of see the appeal. They look kind of like transformers, maybe. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? I can definitely see the appeal because I love Japanese robots and mecha. I can totally see a kid liking construction equipment because it's got those same angular lines and like kind of metallic robot feel. Yeah, I can definitely see it. There's a big crew of geese and they look like they're sleeping almost. And now if there's one thing I know about geese, it's that they are mean mother... So I think we're gonna give them a wide berth. I think yesterday I mentioned uh, businesses, right? It pains me to see businesses that aren't booming. Imagine if you started a porta potty business and it wasn't booming. How depressed would you be? You spent all that money on toilets and trying to get people to use your toilets and it's not successful. <laughs> it's like... That, I, I don't know, man. So yesterday, for whatever reason, I pulled out Chrono Cross, which is one of my very favorite PlayStation 1 games. And I thought that I should also pull out the soundtrack, which is one of my very favorite soundtracks. So I remember when this game came out, 
there was a store called the Game World that was right next to the Best Buy. And there was like this local, independently owned video game store. This is a theme the last two days, but I keep talking about businesses not thriving. If there was ever a business that wasn't thriving, it was Game World. But the really cool thing about Game World is that they had uh, imports and they also let you try out new games. So I remember the day Chrono Cross came out, I went to that store and I was playing it in store. And I still hadn't decided yet whether I wanted to get it or not. And then after playing, I was like, oh man, I gotta get it. But next door, Best Buy actually had it on sale. So it was like $10 off or something like that. Imagine the comic book nerd from The Simpsons. And that was the guy who was working at the desk. He was really nice until I said, yo, can I get a price match for the Best Buy next door? I was like, yo, I want to support a local business. Which in retrospect, now I know that like buying it from him at that discounted price didn't support him. That probably made him lose money. <laughs> But I mean, they had the price matching, so it, I don't know what they expected to happen. But anyways, as soon as I said, can I get a price match, he, his mood turned sour and he's like, ugh. He actually called them to verify. They were literally the next door over. But anyways, I got the game. And it's a great game, timeless, man. But it has some of the best music ever. And it's done by a composer named Yasunori Mitsuda. He did the majority of the music from Chrono Trigger. But uh, I remember listening to this CD soundtrack in high school while doing my math homework on a portable CD player. Back in the day, I don't know how many of you are young enough to not remember CDs, but it used to be that when you wanted to listen to music on the go, you had to have a portable CD player. Can you imagine that, man? Thank you for watching today's vlog. Thank you for hitting that like button. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Look who's back. My mailman, whenever he comes to the door to deliver a package, he always goes, all right, all right. I'm like one of the coolest dudes. <laughs> Such a nice guy. Which is funny that I'm mentioning him right now because I actually had to go to the post office to pick that up.